We are Venom. Today's video review, we're going to be having a look at the new Diamond Select Marvel Select Venom. This is the Disney Store exclusive. Very first thing we'll do with Venom is figure out how tall he is. So putting the tape measure right to the very top of his head and stopping it right there. According to the Ultra Measuretron, the figure is at a very impressive 7.8 inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and do that right now. Hold on, let me do that right now for you. It's about 20 centimeters in height, 19.9 to be exact. Sadly, even though I do have a Disney store in my area, I didn't wasn't able to find this particular Venom. So ultimately, I had to go online, pick them up on eBay. And of course, with eBay, I had to pay the conversion rates and all that lovely stuff that goes along with it. Why are you moving him off to the right? Somebody yells. I'm moving him off to the right just to show you that he is the same figure to some extent as the regular retail release slash comic book store release version of Marvel Select Venom. The body is at least exactly the same. And as you'll see in the course of this hopefully in-depth review, the Venom does change a little bit more drastically, I think, in his head. Roughly most, if not all of it, stays about the same. The backpack also changes as well, but we'll talk all about that in a second. By the way, if you guys have not yet picked up this Venom, this is by far one of the best, if not the best, Venom that has ever been released in plastic form. I've already done a review, I believe, of this guy now twice. He was that good. If you want to go back and have a look at my multiple reviews of this guy, there's ones on the playlist, but we don't want to take the spotlight away from the Disney Store exclusive. Let's have a look at all the accessories that come included with that figure. The figure comes with a ton of accessories. In fact, I believe it even comes with more than what we got with the retail release, but we'll kind of do comparisons, apples to apples, if you will, when we compare each of the individual accessories. So I have to start with some sad news, some sad breaking news brought to this review. Unfortunately, uh, when you do get this guy out of packaging, of course he does have the backpack. Now this is slightly different than the backpack that he came included with when we looked at the retail release. When you do it, get it, you do have to assemble it. There's some holes here that will lay them, you know, play out the, uh, the little tentacles and tendrils and stuff like that that will attach to that. But then you also have these ball joints up at the top in which you get these very long, almost insect-like legs that can be attached to the top of the backpack. When you do get them out of package, uh, the package, you do have to uh, put them in to the socket area, kind of just work them in. You can probably see where this was going. This is not what I would consider the softest of plastics, but where the angle is, right there, right there, if you are putting this in, be careful that it is. Uh, this is moving freely enough, because if it isn't, you're going to start developing stress marks right there. I'm pointing right at the culprit right there. And that ultimately is what ended up happening. It's just the luck of the draw. I decided to keep this in the review, because I did want to be honest with you guys. I could have simply just glued it in place and not said anything. Just kept the deception uh, behind the scenes, but I thought, no, I'm going to keep it in here because I want to show you guys things that you have to be careful of. When you are putting these in here, something I didn't do and something you probably would want to consider doing yourself, is taking this, just this, submerging it in hot water. And what that is going to do is it's going to relax the plastic around the socket area that when you then take the ball joint, the ball joint will slip in like a hot knife through butter and you're not going to have the same problem. The ball joints come out fairly easy once you get them in place, but it's that initial putting it in place that did cause all the problems that I'm facing now. now again, I'm going to just glue this in place, but I did want to keep it in this video to show you guys that this is something that you got to be careful of. Yeah, I mean, it's literally like you can almost even see that's where the problem would be. Twisting it here, this being a bend, and ball joint sitting right there. So you may want to heat this before you put the arm in. Don't do what Johnny Don't does. 
Anyways, here is what the backpack looks like. That's the best way I could describe it, really. If we look at the one that came included with the retail release Venom, granted, yes, this has all the extra arms and stuff like that that I've already attached to the back, the backpacks are drastically different from one another, simply not just repainting it. Speaking of repainting, what they did leave off, though, on the retail release was the Symbiote Spider, the little spider logo that was on the back. The Disney Store exclusive doesn't have that. It's not only smaller, but it also is missing all those additional paint applications. It's also missing sections in which the heads could be attached, which the heads were already attached when you get these this guy out of the packaging. If you are curious, however, I'm going to grab the figure, and I'm going to put it over top of his body. There's something I wanted to show you, though. If you think it's a perfect fit, it's not quite... I don't know really what has changed to it. I don't think the the upper shoulder area has been drastically changed, but it doesn't seem to sit as comfortably, even though you could pull it off, it doesn't sit as nearly as comfortable as the one that was for the other Venom. And uh, we'll just put him here for a second. We're gonna, I apologize well in advance. There's probably gonna be a lot of uh, jumping back and forth between the figures because again, I really wanna be able to show you guys as thoroughly as I possibly can. This again, this fits over his shoulder. Well, I guess it doesn't fit as well as I initially thought or remembered it fitting. There we go, it was just a little bit of a snap that's in place. I could probably accomplish the same thing by snapping it into place onto that guy's torso as well. Just took a little bit of extra force. So let's go ahead and do that again. Applying what we've just learned. There we go. Yeah, it does sit in there. Um, it does give you a whole lot of extra stuff happening with it. But it is theoretically possible if you wanted to change out and put this torso, the backpack on this guy's torso. Okay, so we'll quickly go back to the uh, the, the little back extra piece. I don't want to keep calling it a backpack. Sounds like we're going to school, but um, like there's really not a whole lot happening to it other than breakage happening right here. These arms, by the way, being that they are ball jointed, do again pop out way too frequently. Too much for my liking. It's strange. The irony is putting it in place was so difficult. Then when moving it, they pop out way too frequently. And I guess you could have also put it on this side, but I thought like the curve would make better sense, even though really the backpack, there we go, calling it that again, really goes this way. And uh, so I guess I could have probably put the arms up this way, you see, and I just ended up putting it on this side. Not that that would have greatly affected the way that the ball joint would have worked, nor would it have affected necessarily this breaking off on me. So I might actually pull this out, replace them on the other side, put this one over here, because I think this one makes more sense over here now. And uh, like I said, glue this one so that I won't have the same problem. Where'd, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Right there. And uh, just glue those in place. But these do have hinges. There's a hinge right here. And there's a hinge right here. I like these because they look just like in, like insecta, insectoid or insect insect legs. I don't know why I'm over pronouncing insect. Little insect legs. I like that. Then you have all this extra. Let me go and pull this one out. I don't want to have any more mishaps with ball joints. But then you have all these extra holes right here. One, two, three, and four. And little baby five down below there. Because he does also come with all these extra little extensions. Now these are pretty cool, I have to admit, and they are universal, so there is no real specific placement where these necessarily have to go. You can really put them anywhere that you want. So let's, for example, put that one right there. And as you can see, they vary in different shapes and different sizes. I'm going to put that one right there. We're going to put this one right up here. Now understanding again, it's going to go this way. I keep wanting to think that it's going to go this way but it does actually go the opposite way. And we're gonna put this one in right there, and we're gonna put this one in right here, like that, until we get, like I said, the look that we want. And there's this really neat long one, so we're gonna put that one, I think, up at the top, just like that. Once you have get enough busy stuff happening here, then you can simply just attach it to the back of Venom, which, I have to admit, this part, this section, omitting what I was going to call it, does fit on a little easier, 
perhaps a little too easy, but it does fit fairly easy on his shoulders. And then you've got all this extra stuff happening there. A little bit too much stuff. You're, you're thinking to yourself, it's a little too busy. Okay, that's fine. One thing also he has is the holes on the sides. Now the other Venom did have the same holes on his arms. So being that these are also universal, you can take these off and, and, and you can attach them to the sides of his arms. Again, you may have to decide which works a little bit better than others. I mean, you could put really, in theory, any one of them on his arms, but some of them may look a little bit better than others. Some also place and peg into their arms, his arms, a little bit easier than the others. And like I said, this one maybe may not make too much sense, but the idea is, again, you can mix and match these to your heart's content. He does have these also little smaller versions that, again, could go onto that that thing right there, or you can also attach them to his arms. And there are so, sometimes they're a little finicky, but again, you can just attach them to those same hole sockets as that came with the other Venom. Now you're probably asking yourself, hey, wait a minute. If I'm doing my calculations correctly, sir, kind sir, does that also mean that you can take those arms, say for example, this arm here, can you use it with the other Venom? You can, and you will. Perhaps, I don't know. They do attach fairly easy just to the arm area, just via those holes. There's one right there, and there's one right there. So those are all your things that come included with this particular Venom. And as we've already discussed, you've got the options of these that you can mix and match to his arms, or you can keep them to the back here, which again, I want to go like this. It really should go like this. Okay, so we're going to move those all aside because you don't want to beat a dead horse and keep covering over the same base same base points, talking points. Let's talk about some of the other things that come included with the figure. We're going to talk about hands. Now the hands, from what I can see, I'm going to reach off to the side here. And, oh, actually, I attached it to this Venom. You'll see, let me just show, let me just show you, let me just show you. Those are the same hands that came included with this Venom. Venom came with three sets of hands. This Venom here also comes with three sets of hands. Basically, those hands are can be mixed and matched. The only thing that really this Venom doesn't have that the retail version had was these extra arms. These ones right here that you could detach if you wanted to. You can also detach the hands and you can use the smaller hands if you wanted to. The comic version of Venom had that. So he comes right now, currently, out of packaging, ready to mangle and maim the friendly neighbor man. These giant claws. Look at the size of these giant claws. Pretty cool, you have to admit. Um, surprisingly, also, very prickly when you run your fingers across them. They are very prickly fingers. They look pretty cool. But I might have to actually switch these out. So I'm going to pop those right out, like that and like that. And I guess in theory, you could also put these over here onto his forearms. That'd be a little ridiculous. Okay, we won't do that then. He does also come, like I said, with these hands. So I think these are going to be my defaulted hands. They're not as crazy. They're not as large as the big oven mitt sized hands he started with. I'm going to pop that one in place. And we're going to pop this one in place. There we go. I keep pricking myself as I'm doing this. Yeah, that's a little bit more manageable, I feel. It's not as big, not as bulky, but I mean, again, with this being a Venom that you can really do anything you want with, mix and matching wise, it's neat that they would include these big hands. Not something I would probably use with the figure myself, but I'm glad that they include them. He also comes with a pair of closed fists, also came included with the Venom that's over there. Okay. So let's have a look at his three different head sculpts, all of which, all three of them, are different than the first Venom that we got. First of all, we got this one here. I really like this head sculpt, so much so I started the review with this particular head sculpt. But if this isn't your cup of tea, it's sort of more cartoony, I suppose. Again, it's really neat, though, because it's not something that you would normally expect to find with Venom. Uh, the one that came with Venom, or the one that... I currently display on this Venom is obviously the big smiling teeth. It's such classic look of Venom. I prefer really the teeth visible than the visible tongue. It's just my options, just what I decided to go with. But I like this one because it's just different. 
It's not something you would normally expect to find with Venom. Speaking of not expecting to find with Venom, you probably would expect to find these with Venom. He comes also with various other head sculpts. Three, actually, to be exact. One that comes on the figure, the one that we just looked at, and then these ones right here. Now, this one may look like the one that came included with the other Venom. So I want to show you just the comparison between the two. There is the retail Venom, or the comic Venom. This is the new Venom. I think they've fixed the teeth, obviously. The teeth run much further up, as you can see, up the smile. The tongues are different. This one's a much longer tongue. This one here, can you actually detach it, which I haven't tried yet? Ugh, you probably could. It looks like it's just pegged in place. I wonder if you could swap it out with the longer tongue. Kind of like the shorter tongue myself. Um, the eyes are different. The sculpting on the head is different. And even like the slime that comes down from his, from his chin, his little chinny chin chin, is also different than the green slime that we got on this one right here. Again, like you could mix and match these. If you want to decide you want to use this head sculpt on that Venom. Why not? You could do that. If you want to use this head sculpt, for example. The only, the only problematic thing about this particular head is the way that they've colored the slime. They haven't covered it completely to the bottom. So as a result, he's still got some black plastic peeking through down below there. It sort of jars it for a second, making it look like the mouth is longer than what it should. Because really, like the mouth chin stops there. It doesn't stop down there like the head sculpt though on this one and then if that isn't your preference your liking he also has this one and this one's really neat because it's got a like an elongated jaw it drapes out a little bit further out some of the more exaggerated things that you'd expect to find with venom in the comics comes over here as well the eyes are very differently sculpted also the teeth are different placement different ways artists of course have depicted venom in the comics diamonds like pretty much have between collectively I guess now six heads, you could pick any one of these to decide you want to display Venom with. I really like the tongue on this one. I know I'm sort of a hypocrite because I like the smile on this one. That's the beauty of it, being that now there are two technically two Venoms on the market. I could display one with a smiley face, my kind of go-to look for him, and I could display him with one of the three various heads here. Or, or I could also go back to, if I don't drop it over here, I could go to this head sculpt, or I could go to this head sculpt, which came with the initial release. So a couple of different options right there. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, I decide I want to change this head sculpt out. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop the head off the ball joint. Much easier, I have to admit, than putting those arms on. And I think for the rest of this, this look at this Venom, I'm going to go with this head sculpt because I kind of like the exaggerated look of the jaw. Gonna attach it in place, which does involve a little bit more force. And now you've got this particular head sculpt, which is kind of over the top, a little crazy, a little zany, but I like that. I like that. And maybe it might even lend itself a little bit more to then utilizing that extra piece. Wasn't gonna say the word, that extra piece that you can then put on his back. Other than that, other than that, muchachos. The, uh, the Venom is exactly the same. How many times have I said Venom in the course of this review? The body molds are exactly the same. The one thing I noticed, though, about the Disney Store version is it seems like they've omitted all the lighter shade of black or even what you could consider darker shades of blue have been completely omitted. Instead, they've just given them an all shiny black treatment, which actually I think works well. This one thing, that's the one, one little thing that had kind of me a little perplexed with this particular Venom, why his coloring changed much. On this one side, it was blue. This one side's a little bit more on the black side. At least this Venom is all black. And there's the backs of them, exactly the same. Nothing different. Same sculpt, nothing different there. Same old, same old. I think we've done enough comparisons. Now let's go ahead and have a look at his posability. So his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. There is no hinge option in his mouth. Could it be? Could there have been? Sure, why not? But this one just this these uh the jaws don't move. They they're just staction. Even like this one here is also staction. So like, we've already looked at the head. Okay, we got that. Ball joint in the upper torso, lower torso swivel, shoulders hinge out. 
They can also rotate all the way around. There's the hinge joint right there. See that? It's almost hard to make out, but it's right there. That's where the hinge joint in the arm is. Swivel on the bicep. It's got a single hinge on the elbow. And then it's hands, whatever hands you go with, have just a standard swivel. Because, because, because they're only pegged in. See, there's no hinge or anything on the hands. They don't move in and out. They only rotate all the way around. Uh, as for the legs, legs go forward, legs go back, legs go out, a swivel on the mid cut of the thigh, a single and only one single hinge on the knee, and then he's also got a hinge in the foot. This particular fellow, okay, we'll call him Venom. This one particular Venom actually is super poseable. One of the benefits of getting him as a Marvel Select lineup. Shy of, just shy of, the Toy Biz Spider-Man Classics Venom, which is still one of my all-time favorite figures in the entire universe. I disappoint myself the fact that I sold him. And one of the reasons why we haven't looked at him again on this channel and the prices of him have skyrocketed. I think this is the next comparable, next best thing. The only thing that was really a detriment to that figure anyways was the fact that his jaw, I think there was like a little button mechanism on the back that could, in theory, move his jaw, which it could really not. I did a review of that one if you'd like to still check that out. A long time ago, mind you, but I still did a review of it. Either way, though, great looking Venoms. This is certainly an instance in which getting a Disney Store exclusive gets you extra perks. A lot of times they'll give you an unmasked portrait of a character for a Disney Store exclusive, sort of just urging you to pick him up. Venom gets that. Uh, he gets that with three various brand new head sculpts. He gets a brand new backpack, and he gets some various different extensions of his symbiote costume that you can mix and match of him. And then again, the beauty of it is whatever you don't put on this guy, you could easily then put on this one, the one that you had before. So, how cool is the new Marvel Select Disney Store exclusive Venom figure? The answer is very cool. If Even if you've already picked up the retail release of the Marvel Select Venom, I still think there's enough going on for this guy that it's worth picking up a second go around. I loved that other Marvel Select Venom. In fact, of my top 10 favorite figures, he falls within top 10. If I ever sell my collection again, knock on wood, that never happens, I probably would still keep that figure no matter what, like I would keep this figure right here. This one has a lot of different swappable options, and I like that each of the swappable options are different than the one that we got with the other Venom. In fact, actually, other than just the hands, nothing really carries over from that figure to this figure right here. Maybe except for a few little extensions of symbiote here or there, this is a Venom that has all unique traits to him. It's a shame, unfortunately, while I'm talking a little bit about that, I'm reminded by the fact that I broke that adjusted arm on the back. Lesson learned, by the way, if you do pick up this figure for yourself, just FYI, you may want to heat the socket area of that backpack before you try to apply the ball joint. Because what ultimately ends up happening is the ball joint is going to be, of course, friction fitted. So when you are trying to put it, you're, put it in there, if you are twisting the arm in any little way, even if it is made of a more durable plastic, you may develop stress marks. And from there, it's downhill. That's what ultimately happened with mine. And even though I probably wouldn't end up displaying the figure with them anyways, because I just feel like it's too much stuff happening, I'm going to probably still want to glue it anyways, because I really don't like a figure with broken pieces sitting around. I love this Venom because it does have some unique traits and characteristics to it. More importantly, in the head sculpts, all the un unique head sculpts are so different from one another. And again, if you want to use any one of these things that we've looked at in this figure with the previous Venom that you have in your collection, you have the options to do that as well. There's enough going right for this figure that even if you had the other one, there's still enough differences to this one that I think it's still worth picking up. Again, the problem is this is a Disney store exclusive. So short of you going to a Disney store and lucking out and finding one, which sadly I couldn't, you're going to probably ultimately have to pick this guy up online and you'll be at the mercy of whatever prices some of the scalpers are going to be selling this guy for. He's a relatively new figure too, so you shouldn't expect to pay too much more than asking a retail price. Anything above and beyond that, that person's just being greedy and is trying to sell it for a little bit more than what it's actually worth. I still think it's worth picking up, but just don't pay the crazy prices to get this guy though. Today we were having a look at the Diamond Select. This is the Disney Store exclusive Marvel Select Venom.
with a pretty cool looking new head sculpt. Three, actually, to be exact. Now, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Venom reviews, there's a whole playlist just for Venom. You believe that? Just for Venom. Venom used to be one of my all-time favorite super villains, slash superheroes, I suppose, if you will. Over the course of time, Venom has just become very increasingly more popular, and I guess my interest in him have kind of wavered a little bit, sort of in the same vein as Wolverine and Deadpool. He's everywhere now, so my interest in him isn't as much as maybe it was when I was in high school, but I still love Venom, and this Venom is super, super cool. Super cool! Either way, guys, Thanks for watching as you always do. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because super, some more super cool videos, <laughs> self-proclaimed, will be coming your way. So stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.